Guys, don't ruin your slow motion, crispy, maybe once in a lifetime shot because of your O-rings being damaged or your housing not being cleaned like this shot. That to me is heartbreak and yet so easy to avoid. Following this guide, we're gonna prevent O-rings from ever breaking or hopefully your housing ever turning into looking like this where half the buttons don't work, there's tape on the handles and nearly every button has watermarks on it. Hello friends, Josh Munoz here, professional underwater photographer and freediving instructor. In today's video, we are going to go over how to properly care for your underwater housing, how to properly clean the housing. We're gonna look at maintaining your O-rings, setting up the camera inside your housing, caring for your camera body, and how to properly store your gear. The way that you care for your gear is going to significantly increase its life. There are some really important steps you need to take every time your underwater housing gets wet. There are some really important things you need to do at the end of every week or two weeks, depending on how much you use your housing. And there's a super important step that you should be doing every year to two years with your housing that we're gonna look at at the end of this video. So let's get into it. Cleaning the housing after each use is really simple and it needs to be done, especially if it's been in salt water. To start, we're gonna just spray down the housing with fresh water. Better yet, let it actually soak in a large bucket or bin for several minutes. The best practice is to press every single button while you're rinsing your housing or while it's soaking in fresh water to ensure that no water gets stuck underneath these springs and over time these buttons won't become sticky. After rinsing the housing, we need to start getting the housing completely dry. So starting with a towel is great, but then next you do want to start using an air duster and spray in between every single button or basically any place you think water can get stuck. If you don't remove water around these buttons, the springs over time will become sticky and it's terrible for the housing to be stored if there's still water inside those areas. You will be surprised of how much water can get trapped inside. After this, I try and set my housing inside, preferably under a fan to let it continue drying before we start to open up the housing to retrieve the camera. But the most important thing is not letting it dry in the sun. Maintaining your O-rings is a super important step in ensuring that no water ever gets inside your housing. This process takes usually between 30 to 45 minutes, and depending on how much you use your housing, it should be done at the end of every week or at least minimum once per month. As salt water gets on the outside of these O-rings, that salt over time, if not cleaned off, is gonna start to dry. And that dried salt is essentially a crystal. And the next time we take our housing deep and under pressure, that pressure is gonna start essentially squeezing around that little crystal and it's gonna start cutting into your O-ring. The tiniest of tears is gonna start allowing water to get inside your camera housing. Once your housing is clean and dry, we want to grab our O-ring removal tool to start removing all of our O-rings. You can use a guitar pick, you could use a paper clip. Best is to use an actual tool, just don't use anything that's too sharp that might damage the O-rings. And we're gonna start working our way and gathering every single O-ring to be cleaned and re-greased. Okay, once you've got all your O-rings removed, we are going to run these under fresh water. Try to remove any gunk that might be left on them, getting all the salt off, and removing all the old grease that has been on them. Set them off to the side, preferably in a bowl of water once you're done rinsing, and we're gonna move on to cleaning out the housing to prepare to put the O-rings back inside. To clean our housing, what we want to do is use a paper towel or some form of like a lint-free rag, and we want to start using this paper towel and going inside all the grooves and edges that our O-rings have previously sat in, removing any old grease and getting rid of any hair or dust that might be inside. Okay, once our housing is cleaned off, we are going to go back to our O-rings. We are gonna grab some O-ring grease and we're gonna start reapplying some new grease to each O-ring. What I like to do is just add a small dab of grease every few inches, working around the entire O-ring and then rubbing it in. This way I can feel if there's any tears, I'm gonna be able to remove any you know hairs that might be on it and yep, rubbing grease around the whole O-ring and reinserting it back inside the housing. While going through this process, try to avoid getting grease on the actual housing. It can be a pain to clean up and we especially want to try and avoid getting grease on the dome itself, like on the glass dome, because that is really hard to get off.
While setting up your camera, maybe the lens or especially the dome, there are a few things we want to try and avoid. The biggest being not leaving the dome open and exposed to dust, hairs to get inside this dome because that is gonna show up on images. It's gonna be especially important with our camera and our lens. Again, not leaving these open and exposed while we're working with our gear always trying to leave them closed off or at least with a cap on and covered. When it comes time to removing my lens or switching out lenses, I basically always try and do it with my camera body actually facing completely down so that I'm never risking getting more dust or hairs inside my camera sensor. And while I'm putting together my underwater housing, I always try and do this to be able to keep my dome facing down so that again, I'm not allowing for any more dust or hairs to get inside the dome. Caring for your camera body should be very simple because if you've maintained your housing very nicely, there should never be water that touches this camera. However, there are times while changing lenses that we might find dust or the tiniest of hair get inside. Again, I like to use my air duster. I can kind of clean out my sensor, give it a look, make sure that there's nothing on it so that I'm good to go and then reattach the lens. You can always send in your camera body to get professionally cleaned and the cleaners will clean off the sensor to ensure that there's no marks, smudges inside there. But again, it's very easy to avoid if we just focus on never leaving it open and exposed while we're piecing things together. To properly store your gear, I would recommend keeping your gear stored in either a Pelican case or a dry cabinet where you can control the humidity levels. If stored inside of a Pelican case, you need to ensure that your housing is 100% dried off so that you're not leaving it locked inside there with water in or around the housing. And I would even recommend adding handfuls of these silica gel packets to just pick up any extra moisture that might be inside the housing. A dry cabinet, like a humidity controlled cabinet, is gonna be maybe slightly more expensive, but it's gonna be much more effective. This brand, Rugged, makes some awesome pieces of equipment. I can leave all of my gear set in there and I can control the humidity levels and the temperature inside the cabinet. Now, the final thing that I would recommend with your housing, something that you should be doing every year or maybe every two years, again, depending on how much you're using it or depending around your schedule and if you have trips coming up, but this is going to be sending in your housing to get professionally serviced. Companies like Backscatter do an amazing job at refurbishing housings. They're gonna go through and they're gonna change out every little spring. They're gonna replace all of your O-rings and they're gonna just look in the inside of the housing and make sure everything's nice, clean, and all your buttons are working properly. Generally, the turnaround time is between two to four weeks, but you can pay for an expedited service if you need your housing back sooner. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you continue to keep your housing or your camera clean over the years. Please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you. In the meantime, happy shooting.